tell me if I'm right here, you started working on this or, or you were recorded to do this before there was even the name Sharks? Yeah, what, what basically what had happened was there was, I guess what did they call it, uh, California hockey something or other. Right, before oh, it was the Sharks. Was, uh, Bay Area hockey. Right. Um, what had happened is I, I was doing a talk um, at an event and uh, Matt Levin was there who okay. at the time was, uh, you know, somebody who was in sports, kind of one of the sports gurus when it came to marketing and things. And he saw me speak and long story, they, they said, hey, you know, because at that time, nobody knew me for logos. Right. And you were just I, an artist. I was just an artist. Okay. I was showing what we had done for other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of my approach was different. Uh, if, for anybody who's seen my artwork, it was, I, I call it sports fantasy. So we were doing things that nobody else was doing. Um, and so they saw that and said, hey, would you be interested? And I said, sure. In, in doing our logo. In doing a logo. Now, they didn't have the name Sharks yet, though. They did not have because the name. Because it was a fan <laughs> contest that helped decide the name Sharks. In theory, it was a fan contest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was known as a fan contest. Here we go. The true story. Well, again. They, it, they might have angled it in the way they wanted. They were it. trying to figure out yeah. what the name was, um, you know, what they were going to do. And as you know, yeah. right, the, the uh, San Jose... SAP didn't exist at the time, right. so they played originally at the Cow Palace. Right. But when we first started, it was about, you know, who is this team? What do we want to do? So, yes, they were going through names. They were doing focus groups, trying to figure out what the names were, right. um, all that kind of stuff. But you were going to come up with the logo no matter what the name was going to be. It was you're, You were at least in that mix, right? <laughs> yeah, I, w I was involved in the conversations early on yeah. when it had to come with name, when it had to come with, you know, logo and things like that. And you know, at that time, my recommendation, um, because if you remember, that was also a time where people were picking some, you know, esoteric names. Yeah. You know, if you think about the USFL, you had the sun, the bell, things like that. Right. And part of it is how do you represent those things? Right. right. So for me, you know, I was, you know, pushing heavily towards let's have something that's tangible. A shark. <laughs> anything okay that's yeah. tangible yeah. right instead of you know kind of like I said an esoteric name and so they finally come up with sharks but from what I also understand you know teal you associate with San Jose hockey and other teams uh, use teal eventually the Charlotte Hornets the Florida Marlins Jacksonville Jaguars but the sharks were the first to use teal but but tell me if this is right initially the sharks main color was going to be red as in blood red? Is that right? <laughs> well, one of the, as, as we were looking at the colors. Yeah. Right. So, you know, um, some of the early, in fact, you know, I think you've seen some of those ones. Uh, one of the names was Tiger Sharks, right? Yeah. So that you'll see one of the early designs was it was green, like a lime green <laughs> and black and white with kind of a tiger stripe pattern on it. So, you know, colors were still, you know, kind of up in the air. You know, I, I was probably one of the stronger people in terms of pushing for, uh, for red because it made sense. Really? Yes. And the reason is, if you think about a shark, it creates red by blood in chewing the water. something up. Thank yeah. you. Right. <laughs> so it makes perfect sense. Okay. The other thing you think about, I do when you're designing these things, is longevity. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you think about it's a co primary color, red colors is, right? that will stand the test yeah. of time. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's why when you start to think about it, but really one of the main reasons we went in that direction and you ask if anybody else had teal, um, you know, one of the people in the organizations was a big Miami Dolphin fan. Okay. Oh, that's right. Right. Well, they and had so teal too. They yeah. had kind of a, a tealish orange, you know, that kind right. of stuff. And so, you know, it was one of the colors they wanted us to try. And so you weren't opposed to teal when they said, you know oh, no. what, let's steer it this direction. That no. was that was an no. opportunity. The whole thing is if you are going to go with those colors, it's find one that works. Yeah. So if you remember, if you look now, the original teal that was used. Right. Lighter shade. I've teased you about non-photo blue. <laughs> one of the problems that they had with the original teal uniforms is they did not work very well on television at that time. Okay. Right. Right. Too so, close to blue. Yeah. Yeah. Chroma keying. We're talking about <laughs> chroma keying here. If that's if that's so deep. So when you come up with that initial logo, like this yeah. is the one that people know these days. Correct. But the original was not not a totally different departure from this. Um, were computers prominent back then? The first logo was it designed and mastered by hand, or was it on a computer program? We're talking early '90s here. Yeah, I, all, everything that I did, you know, was always by hand. 
Really? All my paintings, all the logos, everything that we're doing is by hand. So how do you make the initial <clears throat> logo by hand and then is there like a master version of it that gets scanned or how, how do you do that? Well, uh, what you'll end up doing now um, is and I'm trying to think what it was back then, because that was 35 <laughs> years ago, what we did. Did you do it on a stone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, think of it that back then when you had to reproduce something. You would do it by hand. Right. This is pre-computed and stuff. So literally, you were doing things. You might take an X-Acto blade or you're using you know, photography right. processes where you do something and take a picture it's of like it. It's like splicing film almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a very different okay. process back then. And then who eventually did the final approval? Who, who were you presenting this to, was it a group of people who said, that's the one right there, that's, that's the final logo we want to go with? Yeah, well, again, you know, the, the Sharks had a, you know, with Matt Levin, uh, the Sharks organization, again, they had people who were going to make that decision. And, you know, when we first um, started, there were three, I think there were three logos that they were using in their focus groups. Right. One was the one that you saw the other one, I think you, you've seen some of the images of it was a shark with a hockey stick. It was a more cartoon version. Right. As I look behind you, I can see it. Uh, <laughs> so, it was, so cool to have all, <laughs> all the things that did and did not make it behind us right yeah. now. But it was, um, and so in the focus groups, mm -hmm. that cartoon shark with the hockey stick. Was better? It was kind of taking the lead in the wow. focus groups. But at the time, the team didn't want anything too cartoony. Right. Um, you know, at that time, there was really only one NHL logo like that. It was probably the old Penguins logo. Right. Um, and so, again, this was how are you going to, you know, what do the guys want to wear? How are right. you going to represent? Long story short, you know, they made the decision to go, you know, in the other direction, which, you know, when it first came out, we caught a lot of heat for, too. And there's also <laughs> something that was apparently not controversial with the team, but the league. The league didn't like the broken hockey stick. Like the old logo has it too, the shark chomping yeah. through the stick. Yeah. There was some kickback on that too? Yeah, again, you, what you have to remember. That's, that's crazy. That, no, that, that, no. That's a problem. But, but think about the time. Yeah. Right? Um, hockey, there were no, I'm trying to think, there were no teams west of the Mississippi unless you go up into Canada. Oh, the LA Kings were around. LA Kings too, right? were there, right? Yeah. Other than that, was yeah. there anybody else? Yeah. What was the next team? Right? Yeah, that's and right. So, because the Avs hadn't even moved to Denver yet at that, that point. Yeah. They didn't exist. Arizona was, they didn't exist. did not exist. Yeah, so a lot of teams you're naming, Dallas, yeah. none of those teams St. Exist. Louis was probably as west as it got. There you go. Yeah. Or Detroit, maybe. Detroit was in the Western Conference. <laughs> so part of this was when you're looking at what you're doing, it was, okay, um, hockey is a traditional East Coast, all right. of those types of stuff. We've, we've run into the same issues when we've done stuff for soccer and other leagues, right? There's mm -hmm. kind of traditions that people like to hold. Um, same thing when it came to doing the uniforms and all that kind of stuff. There were traditions. My whole pitch to them when we were doing this was, A, we're in California. Yeah. We are doing something where most Californians did not grow up with hockey. Right. The other side of it was you had to look at w the state of the NHL when it came to merchandising. You know, all of the stuff that we design, and, and this is, I think, where we kind of change the game a little bit for people, is I believe that logos should tell a story. At the time, logos were all designed to kind of represent an area or a team, mm -hmm. but they weren't necessarily designed to tell a story, and they weren't really designed around the story of the fan base. So this is why, again, I, I didn't need an, I, I, having a name that's esoteric yeah. means that fewer people can relate to it. Sure. If I say something like, okay, the, uh, well, if I say something like the stealth. What is we, that? Which we also did the logo for, <laughs> right, by the way. Right, right. But what, what comes to mind? What right. does it mean? So here we needed something, number one is tangible. Number two, most of, this is really pre-hockey having television contracts. Yeah. So most of the revenue was coming from people who were coming to the games. It's putting butts in the seats. Wasn't from the merchandise yet. No, because, yet. They, well, nobody was thinking this way. Right. And I am a commercial artist. <laughs> we design stuff that sells. Right. And I'm also looking at, at that time, your ability to sign players, your ability from a franchise to find. You have to also remember that the NHL properties did not exist. Right. For those of you who are, who are out there who don't know what that means, is all of the leagues have a property division. NFL, NBA, all that kind of stuff. That means all the owners split the revenue from 
logos, from T-shirts, from hats, from all those things. Merch, as the kids from call it these days. So yeah, when right. we did the Sharks logo, yeah. NHL properties did not exist. Right. That means the Sharks were going to get all of that revenue. Oh, man. Which meant that yeah. it could give them an advantage when it came to signing players. And all that. So there's a business side to it. Printing me. money with that Sharks logo in the early 90s. So that's my next question. This logo <laughs> was everywhere. Yeah. Teal was everywhere. The, the royal family across the <laughs> pond were wearing Sharks gear. Yeah. Uh, San Jose, California, are you serious? Um, you must have felt kind of like a rock star. 92, 93, 94. This logo is now out there. Everybody's sporting it. Terry, I've got a jacket in the other room from the 90s. <laughs> like I wore it to middle school. I, I keep it. <laughs> Everybody had the Sharks logo, even if they didn't even know what hockey was. How did it make you feel when all of a sudden that was, like, everywhere? Uh, you know, you feel flattered. Yeah. You feel a little vindicated because you are, you know, somebody's taking a chance on something that you're doing. Yeah. Um, when that logo first came out, again, traditional hockey people, you know, it was panned. Sure. You can go back and read some of the reviews. You yeah. Know? I, I can remember some of them. Amateurish, childish, boorish. That was before social media. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, this, this was stuff that was going to be, you know, right. in articles in like, you know, the New York Times. Right. But, you know, what it was is it was different. Yeah. Um, the stuff that we tend to do is tends to be kind of cutting edge, yeah. you know. And, and, you know, there were... When I work on things, usually, you know, it's, it's my company and <clears throat> there are other artists involved. Um, John uh, Zelesnik, uh, um, Norm Felkley, these are guys I've, I've known for years. Um, they still work with me today, so we do stuff. But you're asking, you know, how did I feel? <clears throat> you know, it, as a diehard sports fan, yeah, I think it's one of those things you think of. You'd like to at some point get to the point where you're playing in the league, right? Sure. So I'm playing in Stanford, and I'm thinking, I, you know, my goal, I want to get to the NBA. Uh, and then you think, okay, I, I, want to, I want to be a professional athlete, and then you're working towards that goal. So to see something that you've done at the professional level is extremely gratifying. Um, to see people walking around yeah. with something you've done Absolutely. Is extremely gratifying. And, you know, and we'll get to it at a point, but we've done enough stuff in the Bay Area where there was a time where I could not open a newspaper <laughs> without seeing one of my logos. I could not be on the freeway without seeing one of my bumper stickers. I could not be in a schoolyard or any place because at one point we literally had almost all the teams in the Bay Area were sporting our stuff. You designed the logo of the high school sports television show <laughs> that was my very first job and I didn't even know it until we started talking. No, you, you were obviously doing a lot of things back then.